Hey folks, Mike Naso here with the latest on the tropics. And what's so interesting as we head into the final day of August is that we have a lot to talk about, but we have a lot to talk about because we don't have a lot to talk about, if that makes any sense. We have had an unusually quiet uh, two months in the Atlantic tropics. Now, usually things are quiet a lot until August, but we've gone throughout the entire month of August without a single tropical storm. And the last time that we have gone from around 4th of July until August 30th without a tropical storm developing or a hurricane was 1941. And so there's a lot of questions in what is a La Nina year, which is favorable for the Atlantic, and what started off with, you know, Alex and Bonnie and those waves off Africa. Why are we so quiet? We're going to talk about this. You can see we do have a few features. This is an invest in the Central Atlantic, 91L. And we have a wave leaving Africa, and we have this blow up in the Caribbean. We also have some uh, doohickey up here in the North Atlantic that we're watching. But right now, honestly, this doesn't look likely, this doesn't look likely, and these both look to hook out to see if they do develop as of right now. So as far as land interaction, you're looking okay for Labor Day weekend along the U.S. East Coast, but you don't want to let your guard down just yet. We'll talk about all this. Here's the latest on our uh, invest. You can see all the computer models take this thing and hook it to the right. Uh, some days ago they were showing maybe it becoming a monster and getting near the Bahamas and Florida and the Carolinas. They've all backed off that. They're weaker and much further to the east. And so if this does develop and become Danielle, we likely would see it turn out to sea. Again, if you're in Bermuda, you'd want to keep an eye but right now, land masses would probably not really be impacted by this. Here's the uh, infrared satellite, and it looks like a giant carrot out there in the central Atlantic. You can see there are the islands of the Caribbean, and this is clearly getting sheared. You can see the shear here. That is very, very unfavorable. You should not have progressing tropical waves that are progressing westward hitting this brick wall of shear the way it is. And you can see that even better here. We have what we call the TUT, T-U-T-T, -T, and that's the Tropical Upper Trophospheric Trough. And that's right in through here, and it's just gutting it like a fish in the Central Atlantic. And so until it spits itself north of that into this little safe harbor, we're not going to see rapid development. And even if it does rapidly develop, then it'll likely be hooking out away from land, although, like I said, Bermuda needs to watch it. Our system here in the Caribbean, a little bit more favorable, but not much there right now when you have wind shear pushing down on it of 20 knots. So wind shear is a factor. Dry air has been a problem. Most years we have a lot of Saharan air. You can see the dust off Africa, and this all moves towards the west. But this one doesn't have as much to contend with. It's got a big moisture envelope, as well as the wave leaving Africa behind it. But there is still some African dust out there impeding things. And then there's the uh, upper level divergence, which is getting better over it and very well over the uh, Caribbean. But again, there's a lot of low divergence, which is instability not happening. And you need unstable instability to get the thunderstorms and the hurricanes going. So what the heck is going on, basically, in the Atlantic? Well, Dr. Phil Klotzbach from Colorado State University, great guy. Met him on several occasions. He posted on Twitter today a couple of maps that I'm going to kind of break down for you. This is the sea, the sea surface temperature anomaly map. And this is uh, climatologically what we're seeing. Look at this cool tongue of water in the Pacific. This is a classic La Nina. Now in La Nina years, and this should be the third one in a row it looks like, which is rare, we normally get... Less hurricanes in the Pacific and the Western Pacific with typhoons and more in the Atlantic. And in El Nino years, it's the opposite. When you get a warm Pacific, you get a cooler, less favorable Atlantic. Well, the way this hurricane season's been acting is almost the opposite. Uh, so that's why we're a little bit perplexed. Then we have the average wind shear. You can see the blue line is what we normally have for hyperactive years or above average years is this orange line here. Last year, which was very busy, we had this dotted line. You could see below average would be somewhere up here, and we've been on more towards an active year. So the wind shear, while it's nasty like I showed you right now, it really hasn't been that bad. And then if you look at the, uh, whatchamacallit, 
humidity levels. We're kind of right there with a busy season. So those aren't that bad. And if you look at the uh, climate forecast where you see the green is more favorable throughout the month of September here from September 6th through 20th, we should have increased upward motion in the Atlantic, which would favor hurricanes. So what's going on? We don't know. Could just be luck of the draw that we've been lucky. This is 1941, and this was that season that I mentioned before. But look what happened. We didn't get diddly squat till September. We had a Category 3 hurricane hit uh, Texas in September. We had a Category 3 hurricane roar through the Bahamas, hit south of Miami at 100 miles an hour in October. And then we had a Category 4 hurricane scrape up through Nicaragua, very deadly. That was 1941, which had a very late start. 1961, same type of deal. Hurricane Carla slammed into Texas, Cat 4. That was September 11th, I believe. We had Hurricane Esther lurk off the East Coast, loop around. We had Hurricane Hattie. Hurricane Hattie devastated Belize on Halloween of 1961, so much so that they named a town after it, Hattiesville, down there in Belize. And that was very, very devastating. So that still had a lot of hyperactive activity. And then 2001 is one that Dr. Klotzbach brings up. I tracked that when I was about 13 years old, and I'll tell you, we had almost nothing until late September, and then the match dropped in the gasoline. We had Hurricane Iris in October, Category 4 in Belize, and we had Hurricane Michelle in November, a Category 4 made landfall at the Bay of Pigs in Cuba with 135 mile an hour winds. Very busy. So what I'm saying to you now is do not let your guard down. We could still have activity. If you're in Florida, if you're on the East Coast, if you're on the Gulf Coast, and especially down in the Caribbean later in the year, La Nina years have a lot of late season activity. But, yeah, it has been inactive. Remember this? Remember this volcano? The Hunga Tonga volcano down in Tonga back in January? That was one of the biggest explosions we've seen. It was the biggest eruption since Pinatubo in 91. And look at the shock wave it sent across the planet. Watch this. Volcano blows here. Look at that shock wave that went right across the planet. There are some murmurs that that eruption could be having an impact on our climate like Pinatubo did back in 91. We don't know, though, so it could just be a coincidence. But we're going to watch this very carefully. You can see the... Uh, GFS model here does show our system turning out there and another off Africa. But other than that, not much going on, and that's with the ensembles. This is actually the European ensembles, I'm sorry. The GFS ensemble, same thing, shows our system south or over Bermuda and then another system off Africa, but nothing much going on. Very quiet for this whole area here of the Caribbean and the Gulf Coast and the East Coast all the way through, say, September 9th. Now, of course, anything could happen, but right now, uh, there aren't any indications of that. You can see off Africa, we have this wave, which is way far north. This one would turn out. Still some good moisture here blowing up, so there will be more waves leaving. And, you know, 1998, Hurricane George hit the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba, the Keys, Biloxi. That didn't even form until September 15th. So there's still time. But it is unusual how inactive it's been. This is not inactive. Take a look at this system, man. This is crazy. This is a typhoon, Hinamanor, and Hinamanor went right near that island there. Watch this Japanese island near Okinawa, and it's uh, Minima Daimojima, and uh, the hurricane force winds impacted, but it just missed the core. Look at that, a Category 5 typhoon. Quite a contrast to our puny wave in the Atlantic. But you can see it's taking that track underneath a ridge of high pressure on off towards the west-southwest. Here's the forecast. You can see it's a Category 5, expected to be a dangerous Category 2, 3, and then back to a 4 and take aim at Japan or the Sea of Japan sometime in the next five or six days, and you can see that even better there. A beautiful typhoon way out there in the western Pacific headed for the southern islands of Japan. So I'm Mike Naso with the latest on the tropics. Things may still get active. Don't let your guard down as we head into September.